Hey, what's up, guys? Man, what a nice day it is today. Look at it. Just look at it. All right, so uh, we got crystal all the way up. We got to move some water mounts. We're going to uh, pull this radiator out. We're going to set the other radiator in and uh, see if the cab opens and closes. It's supposed to, but I uh, just want to make sure it does. And uh, then uh, I'll probably take the radiator back out and then we'll scoop up the engine, take the little pan off it flip the oil pan around or take the oil pan all the way off and leave it off then we'll pick the engine up and we'll set it in here we'll get it on the front mounts and we'll see what's got to happen with the rear mounts that's the best way for me to measure it is uh get it in there and get it on plane and have it bolted to the front and have the forklift holding the weight or maybe even block it up from underneath and uh see where the motor mounts got to go and we'll bolt the motor mounts to the engine and then trace them out on the frame and then we'll get the engine back out and we'll get the we may even we may even uh tack weld you know put the motor mounts on clean up around them tack weld them and then get the motor back out so the mounts don't move and uh bring the drill out and bust bust some holes in there and uh bolt it up and we're probably going to move we're going to slide that whole motor mount and and undercarriage back a little bit um no big deal uh, but yeah that's what we're going to do so i'll get this out set the new radiator in close and open the hood make sure everything's good take the radiator back out set it up here on the wall uh grab the engine um i think i think i can do the engine pretty easy uh, I'll probably just scoot the truck forward and then that way I can grab the engine and come right right to the thing and we'll get it we'll get it set in and get a look at it it may be okay okay See what happens. I got a bunch of grease, and dirt, and clots in my head. It's kind of cool. Let's see what you can see.
right, so a couple of things we got in here. Uh, painted red. Uh, we'll come back to this. And then radiator. back out. I don't know what's what, but we'll see in a minute. Might fit. Looks like it's going to be super tight. Try and make sure we don't cross thread these. Is that, you know, this impact is unforgiving. I don't know. I don't really know. We're going to see. Oh. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, interesting that's very interesting maybe I need a just a little pry unit right back Pull. better if you take your time now I'm not worried about this cab flipping off and hitting the dirt because these are these are new cylinders it's gonna be tight fit but it'll fit It's hitting it pretty hard, isn't it? Ow. Man, that hurts right on the cap. I guess it's hitting pretty hard. Yeah, it's hitting pretty solid. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll shim this side of the radiator up 
when I do the final install, I'll put a stack, a little stack up of washers on, which will bring the radiator a little bit to the right or to the to the left, to the driver's side. And uh, it looks like we have, and actually, I probably won't even have to do that because I don't have that bolt tight. It didn't pull it over, but I'll tighten that one first when I. I'll tighten the left one first, which should rock that over a little bit. Down. Uh, make sure that the other side clears. I think it will. I'll put you right here in the middle where you can get a good view. You see how that intercooler is uh, designed there. Kind of bending the radiator this way a little bit. Yeah, a lot of bit actually. Um, uh, it looks like it's going to come down on it a little bit over on that side um, because the radiator is so far forward. Last thing we want to do is crush that radiator and have it have it be a thing. We are going to put this little uh, protection in here while I'm under there. Yeah, that's the way it goes right there. And I do think. If I had the uh, if I had this tied torqued down, it would uh, it would be over there where it needs to be, and then uh, we can shave on this material a little bit if we have to. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I really do. Um, let me. Let me loosen up the passenger side just to fuzz. No, it's tight. Also, what I could do is I could take that intercooler off and uh, reduce the size of that um, tube. Uh, you know, what you do is you'd cut that tube off and move that in and uh, make that just a fuzz smaller. Um, and that would give us the room that we're looking for. I know people have made this happen. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's clearing it now. Yeah. All right. So I think that's I think that's all doable. Let's see what it looks like when it comes all the way down. Yeah, it is kind of, oh, I 
got her a little over full, I think. But uh, it still kind of hits it a little. But I think it'll work. Uh, what we'll have to do is once we get the uh, we'll fix that bolt on the bottom and we'll since that radiator down and we'll make some side brackets to hold it where it needs to be exactly and we'll trim a little bit of that insulation it looks like it's gonna work we might could uh, we might make that intercooler pipe smaller too. I don't know why they put it where they did. They should have made that they should have made that top tank small enough to where that thing could have came over the top. You know what I mean? Why put it on the side like that? Seems dumb. I'd have made that uh, surge tank smaller. I can tell you right now, this thing's getting a uh, electric pump. thing back quite hard Really not. Really doesn't have that much of a grip on it. just would like it to I just would like it to turn it loose you know it's irritating All right, so what I did was, I just went up along the bolt with the cutoff wheel, and then uh, held onto the stud with a pair of needle nose vice grips and took that off. So, you know, a lot of time trying to get it off of there, and I see what the what the deal is. They just take a bolt, and they weld it to a little plate, and stick it on there, and it's supposed to be good enough. But for all the years it's under there, I guess it's fine.
right, so continuing from what I did down there, you see where I cut with the cutoff wheel just up the nut so I could get it off. And the reason I had to do that is because this was just spinning. And if you look in here, see it's just a carriage bolt that's uh, put through a plate and uh, the plate stripped out. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom plate off and we'll uh, we'll weld this. We'll get a bolt like this and we'll weld it to that plate and then put it back on. It'll give me a chance to use my Arc Captain MiG 200 today. I like using that thing. It's a lot of fun. Oops. I do need to bring the proper socket though. All right, so again, this is how it works. There's a bushing on here. Oh, that bushing's not on that one. But anyways, there's a bushing on there and uh, that's a uh, square drive. So ridiculous, but we'll, uh, we'll fix that. So we cleaned up and painted the bottom. New nuts. Made sure they work good. So that thing's ready to go back in. Uh, we're going to flush this cooling system as soon as we get it in and hooked up. We'll get some cooling system flush and run it through it for a while. And then uh, drain it out and, and uh, you know, do what we got to do. So, uh, yeah, looks so, pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is uh, <clears throat> put some of these wires back up where they belong. Now that the motor is painted, the hard stuff's painted. Uh, it's gonna look pretty good once I get uh, dang, I don't remember where that goes. Down there. Uh, once I get the engine in and uh, start cleaning up this wiring and changing this loom over to something modern. apparently um, I think maybe it goes up higher all right don't know what that is kind of probably important guessing that this is going to go here and then this is going to go on there me because because that's I used to hold that fabric on uh, all right so uh what I'm doing now is take the clutch off now this has got a uh what I think is a remanufactured clutch 
but that doesn't save you that much money, really. Foot pounds, guys. This clutch doesn't hold the wheels on. Let's check it battery. Yep. Oh, the clutch just came off without me. Nice. Hopefully you guys got to see that. Yeah, these cheap asses. A little four puck clutch for a 1650 foot pound of torque motor. Jeez, man, come on. And I'm just betting that there's this big hole <clears throat> nope that's small whole flywheel look at that jeez come on man yeah so uh that's an eight and a half inch pilot and uh small clutch it says it's probably it's probably rated at 1650 but this engine puts out 1650, so why would you do that? You need one that's rated for at least 1850. So you put a 10, a 10 inch pilot flywheel on there and do, uh, do a 2000 foot pound easy pedal clutch. I got a 10 inch flywheel over here that I may have turned for that anyways. So uh, we'll go ahead and get that flywheel off. We'll double check the pin locations, make sure it's the same. I, I believe it is, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just throw it in there like I did Trisha's and then wonder. So I'm gonna make sure that it's the right one. Cool. I mean, it probably did a good job. So, you know, I'm not criticizing for putting it in. Uh, let's see. What now? So, 
obviously I wouldn't want to leave it here for any length of time. Uh, but it is supported by plenty of jack stands. Six tons in the back, 22 tons in the front, plus the forklift has it. Now the forklift does uh, let down just a little. Uh, but I think we're I think we're safe to clean the mess up on the floor and uh, get the oil pan off. The jack stands are just holding it in case the forklift gives gives way. There's nice pads down there. That's working good. Uh, forklift's got it. Got a good bite on it. So I'm not scared. Hopefully you guys aren't scared. Let's get the oil out of it. Go from there, huh? And then we gotta open this bleed screw. I smelled worse, for sure. Whew. I wasn't thinking about consequences and repercussions of zipping that out there, but it's all good. So there's one little piece in, on the magnet and uh, we'll get a look at that in a sec. But uh, nothing too horrible, yeah? Of course, we're not going to put it back in to answer the question. It's inch and a half. So it wasn't very tight. So leads me to believe that maybe a professional change this oil last. This oil filter was completely covered in grease. I don't see uh, I don't see a date. I don't want to sit too close to this. Every once in a while, I'll start to forklift and firm up. All right, it's gonna be hard to see because they're small. But uh, okay, you see that little BB? And you think see just a little piece of cast um, it almost looks like welding slag it actually does looks just like welding slag um, so and I believe the BB is probably welding slag as well so we're gonna put those we're gonna stick those to the neodymium magnet on the toolbox and uh, we'll get back to work in it. Okay. Okay. Whew. Okay. Okay. I have to move that dipstick to this hole. That's all right. Huh. I don't remember uh, I don't remember uh, this pan is pretty clean. 
uh, I don't remember what it looks like on the B model. <clears throat> I don't think this engine's got that many my hours on it since overhaul, uh, which would be kind of cool, you know. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick a piece of gasket on here, and it's just gonna be um, this circle right here. Is that the one? Yeah. We're going to cut right behind it.
go put Crystal back over and call it done for today.